Hello, 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 you guys. Thank you so much for joining me again on my channel. Before we get into Lost, I did want to go ahead and remind you all about Dr. Shola, how we need to keep her in our thoughts. Um, today, I am going to be taking a portion of my workday to contact a few of the advocacy organizations that I follow um, and ask them what they're what they're planning to do to address this, if they're planning to do something to address this, and urge them to lift lift uh, Shola up, Shola and her family up, and to support this cause um, because it's so important. Some of the I don't really know as much the organizations in the UK, so forgive me. Um, but the ones that I, I know a bit more of, I'm going to contact, um, obviously UNICEF and the NAACP. I feel like those are like easy, those are easy ones. I'm also going to contact, um, Southern Poverty Law Center. Um, they don't necessarily just deal with poverty. They also deal with social justice. So I, I think maybe they, they might be able to do something about it. I'm going to, um, also maybe contact um, the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights uh, Foundation, Black Lives Matter, and what was the last one? Um, Better Up. So that's that's going to be my um, little project for today after, after work. And uh, I have absolutely no problem doing that because, you know, like we said, abusers, they like to silence their victims. But we can be a part of change. So I also urge you all to, if it's not those organizations that I mentioned, it could be any organization that you might deem fit, you know, from your local area or organizations that you may have followed, you know, shoot an email, send them a tweet, um, write your local uh, policymakers in the UK if you guys are British up here and you want to advocate for her. Um, I don't really know the system there, but I know in the US we can write to our policymakers and the, the, in, um, in France, where I live, we can go directly to the mari or the like the mayor of our villages or our cities. So um, I urge you guys to do that. Let's protect Shola. Let's not let bigotry win. And with that being said, let's get right into it. <laughs> What's up, guys? I got my matcha tea this morning. Ooh, my makeup is leaking. <clears throat> I don't know why, but like sometimes first thing in the morning. My makeup is just like, you know what? I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. <laughs> what is up, you guys? Welcome back to another video. If you have not already, please do me a favor. Take your little finger and go ahead and click that like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you know when I always post videos. Guys, I am so, so, so happy to be here with you today. Um, I want to tell you that if no one has told you today, you are beautiful. I want to tell you that. Whether you are, um, and my puff balls are not as uh, symmetrical as I would love them. I know you guys are so critical, so please, please be nice. But I want to say that if no one has told you, and I don't care who you are, I don't care how old you are, I don't care what color you are, I don't care what kind of car you drive. I don't care if you live in a house or an apartment. I don't care if you're skinny, if you're fat, if you're black, if you're white, if you're Asian, if you're Middle Eastern, if you're Christian, if you're Muslim. I want to tell you today that I love you. And you are my sister and my brother. And if no one has told you today, you are beautiful, important, and someone out there loves you, so I'm sending my love. Um, I want to talk to you today about one of my favorite, favorite, favorite shows, Lost. Any Lost heads out there, if you guys are like me, please feel free to put your thoughts in the comments. But before we get into Lost, girl, let me just tell you about my day. So even though my day is already just starting, like I got my workout clothes on, um, basically, I need to get my workout on because um, when I'm feeling stressed, it's, um, I'm actually, for those of you who don't know, I don't know if you know, but I've been doing paleo now, the paleo diet. 
since about September. And, um, guys, I have been a bad, bad girl. <laughs> like, it started off with Christmas, you know, and my husband's like, don't worry, it's okay, it's Christmas, like, just go ahead, you know, so Christmas came, and then Christmas went, and I'm still breaking my diet, you know, but I would do it only on cheat days, which is what paleo tells you to do. If you're going to have a cheat day, have a cheat day, just make it once or twice a week, try to limit it and get back on track and that's what I've been doing and I thought that perhaps I, I, I had stopped losing weight I thought that I probably gained a lot of weight back because around Christmas time I had lost 25 pounds so let me just look up these conversions because um child you know I'm American I live in France but uh in Europe they use kilograms and grams and meters and, and you know what so whatever so back in and, and I I don't know if I feel some type of way about telling you guys this but whatever like I feel like people go through the same struggles and that's really why I want to be here for a like-minded community to be able to speak and talk and feel open and welcome enough to do that so I know I'm not the only one who <laughs> has put on some extra pounds so um yeah it's I think I feel like it's important for me to talk about it because other people out there you guys might be able to take some um some solace from this now I have always been around 180 pounds um now I'm not gonna say always but in my mid-twenties, which I'm 31 now, so between my mid-twenties and now, I feel like I've always been around 180 pounds. 180 pounds is... Okay, so that's 81.6 kilograms. And in stone, because I know my, my good friends over in the U.S., you guys measure, you guys measure weight in stone. That's 12.857 stone. So, um, I was usually, like, around 180 pounds between, like, the ages of say 24 and 28 I don't know and then I had a lot of get weight gain over those years it just it just was exponential it, like inclined you know I don't feel like it was just like at one point I had put on 70 pounds or anything I just feel like over time I was gaining more and more weight and on top of that I found out I told you guys I have uterine fibroids and um, I have a lot of them and they're large so I definitely think that that contributes and I'm gonna make a video about that soon eventually I'm gonna have to get them removed but I'm doing what I can right now you know I've looked into wellness with natural healing and homeopathy homeopathy Jesus I can't talk so basically I'm trying to lose some of the weight and see if that shifts the fibroids in any way and then um, eventually I'll get the surgery Probably either way, it's like 70% that the surgery is going to go. Maybe even 90, you know, it's like, I'm just trying to do my part naturally what I, of what I can before I get there. And um, when I was staying with my best friend in university, we had a little house. Um, she's, veg well, she's vegan, actually. She's, she's, she's teetered on vegetarian at times, and she's a tiny little thing. And um, she is also a caterer, like she's a chef she really loves cooking and so she was cooking a lot of our meals and they were vegan and healthy child I lost 30 pounds 20 pounds I was 160 pounds when I was 19 and that is the smallest I think I have ever been you know like other than when I was like 12 or something <laughs> but anyway I digress all of that basically to say that um I thought that I was gaining weight because at um, September when I started paleo, I was 114 kilo or 251 pounds, okay? And then by Christmas, I had lost 25 pounds. I had lost, um, how many has 25 pounds? Yes, I had lost 11.34 kilo. Um, and that's... So, actually, I think I was bigger. Oof. Oh, it's hard to talk about. Especially since when you know that you have fibroids. I'm not trying to blame all of my weight gain on fibroids, but 
I know that I have something hormonal that's going inside on inside of my body that I don't have control of. So it, it basically can help. It, it contributes to the weight gain. And so before that, I must have been much bigger because I was 123 kilograms, and in pounds, 271. So I was I was big, guys. That's big. I mean, I know that there are 800 pound people out there, but that ain't never been my goal. <laughs> um. So now I thought that, you know, from the 114 place, I thought that I probably had started gaining weight after Christmas with all the cheating that I've been doing. And I've been cheating, guys. But I just stepped on the scale and will you believe it? I'm still losing weight. <laughs> like, this is how legit paleo is. I, I probably won't do any other diet for the rest of my life. Like, this is, the, I, there's a lot of celebrities out there like Kendall Jenner and... Matthew McConaughey, who actually follow like a loose keto kind of keto or keto um, or paleo type diet, which is basically like really, really lowering down on your carbs. If you're going to eat carbs, you eat the resistant carbs and eating half of your plate as veggies and fruit with good fat and only a golf, sauce, golf ball size of fat and good protein and meat. And that's it. Like, it's so, so easy to follow. But now I am 109 kilo from when I just weighed downstairs. So apparently even when you cheat, you know, sticking with paleo, it just does wonders. I'm, I love it so much. It, it, it also protects your immune system because you're consuming so much raw, like, nutrients because you eat so many veggies and fruit. Um and uh i feel great so i think that sometime by 2024 2025 i'll be closer to that that size i was in in university but at the same time not pushing myself not well i am pushing myself but not being overly harsh on myself and it's okay um gosh guys dr shola dr shola oh my god um, you know, it's, it's just like I said, this, this, what happened, you know, to her, this incident, first of all, she needs to get some security cameras ASAP. And I, I hope that she's okay. Did I tell you guys I had matcha tea this morning? Like, you know, I mean business when I got matcha tea and matcha tea is great because, um, it's it, at least for paleo you can't really have coffee like I cheat sometimes and I have coffee but um, matcha tea is a great substitute even if not even if it's not a substitute for coffee it's it's strong like coffee like you're gonna get a little energy boost and I don't know I just love the taste like it's bitter kind of like coffee is but it also has a very green taste to it my husband like he thinks that men and women have different taste buds because he's like I don't know he tastes it and he's like and I'm like, what? Seriously? I'm like, dude, I love that. Well, um, I'm looking, I'm looking and there's no updates with Shola. And Lord, she is just so, so, so much in my thoughts. If you saw my last video, um, what do you guys think about that? If you didn't see it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, it just points to how they were right. They were always right. But, um, you know, abusers, they seek to silence. They seek to drain the happiness out of a room. And what you can do is, it's like my grandfather says, never, ever let anybody take your smile away. Don't let them take your smile away. So, um, yeah. But I wanted to talk to you guys today about Lost. Um, it is one of my favorite shows. Like, all-time favorite shows I love it and I feel like um, we live in such a time where like people don't cultivate their hobbies like they don't co they don't cultivate like the things that bring them joy because we've gotten so judgmental let me explain what I mean growing up before social media was the boom at least I know for me, peeps in my class had science collections. They collected stamps. They collected DVDs. 
they collected Super Nintendo games, you know? Um, there were, I, like, I, can you guys be transported back to the day when we used to have big shelves of DVDs and VHS tapes? <laughs> like, at least I know my brother, my big brother, had a wicked collection. He still does, you know? Like, he keeps it to this day. I'm... I'm not as much, I'm not, I'm not on a gangster level like that. A lot of my stuff is, um, digitized, but we used to enjoy our hobbies, you know, our, our, um, train collections, our movies, our, um, book collections, our stamp collections, our VHS and DVD collections, our, you know, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's that we are losing some of the parts of us that, you know, social media and technology can't cultivate. You know, the, the, these things, these things can't be cultivated by just, you know, hanging out on social media all the time. That just, it just, it doesn't work like that. So, um, I don't know, guys. It's like, I, um... Lost is one of those things that really is nostalgic for me. It's something that's so nostalgic for me. And I love not only the fact that it's got this outstanding multicultural cast. It's got that gussy 2004 vibe, you know. And um, it's a show that's really helped me throughout my life. Like, I don't want to sound too, like, you know, new agey or whatever it is, but... It really is. It was a cultural token of that time. The fact that I know it's still relevant and there are people out there like me who were our major Lost Head fans is because I see them online <laughs> and I read their articles and sometimes they're really funny. Sometimes they're talking about the more, you know, important stuff, the more thought-provoking stuff. But, um... Yeah, guys, like, the stuff that you like, even if it's old, you know, if it's throwback stuff, like, wave your weird flag. Wave your weird flag, dude, because, yeah, if you just, I don't know, if, if you forget all of those things that you really loved and you just exist in this time capsule of scrolling through endless, you know, arbitrary content on... TikTok or Instagram or Twitter, you know, I feel like you might, you might risk losing a bit of yourself. So, um, yeah, I don't care if people think I'm weird to like a show from 20 years ago, but I love it. Let me tell you some of the reasons why I love Lost. So, I watch Lost probably at least like once a year. I'm not going to lie. And um, so let's, I'm going to go through these really quick. If you want to watch the show, just go online and look it up, you know. Um... I think you can look at it on Amazon Prime, but I think they've taken it down um, for free, so I think you have to buy it. Um, the first one is Biblical Parallels. So there's so many parallels of sacrifice, of acceptance, you know, with Jack and his dad. You've got the question of the, the prodigal son. Um, the, the difference between Jack and Locke, you clearly see the difference between science and religion, the difference between church and state, the difference between liberal and conservative, the difference between faith and science. That's what they say all the time. You're a man of science, Jack. I'm a man of faith, you know, so I love that dynamic. Um, this idea that there is true value in repentance and turning your life around, I feel like is something that Lost really speak towards. It speaks towards, you know, it's like, um, the island is not necessarily a place. It's not a construct in their mind. It is a test. It is a test of God and nature, um, of putting people who have sinned in their life and them putting the puzzle pieces together to, to work together as sisters and brothers of God. Um, and I love that. So the next one, the next things is that uh, I feel like, well, that's the island. So the next thing is the island. The island is a representation to me of so much more. Um, it's a representation of purgatory. You know, people have said, oh, the island is purgatory. 
I don't think it is purgatory. It's a representation of purgatory. It's a representation of being put almost in like a cosmic timeout, you know? It's almost like COVID, you know? It's like we were forced to take a look at ourselves with COVID. I feel like that's the way that the island is in the show. And the fact that Jacob and the man in black, you know, there's this whole thing behind them. You look at the Bible and um, I actually look, I took some, some quotes from the Bible. So, um, there is Romans 1.16. It says, for I am ashamed, for I am not ashamed of the pro, oh, la, 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 la. for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So what does God want to say in that? We know that the Greeks persecuted the Jews in the Bible and um, Jesus, he's here to save both of them, essentially. Um, if you look at the birth of the Savior, you know, in the manger, the the three wise men who come, you know, in French we say, il y a un noir, il y a un noir, un blanc et un jaune. A uh, that means there was a black guy, a white guy, and uh, a yellow is like literally what you say in French, but um, it's basically a uh, Asian person. Not <laughs> they weren't so politically correct back then, but you know what else? Um, but there's this idea that God is the God. He is all of our God, you know, and and even if you're um, Muslim or you're Jewish, you know, at least from the Abrahamic faiths, um, we all worship the same God, at least to, in my opinion, you know, but everyone holds their own truth for themselves, so I would never want to impose over anyone, but I do think that the show is agnostic enough to give anyone um, something to think about. So the island is a big one. The other thing is multiculturalism. Now, <laughs> I've gone online um, to look in the threads to see what people think um, from a cultural perspective, if the cultural representations in Lost are actually accurate, if the accents are okay. So I talked to Brits, I talked to Australian people, I talked to uh, Ira uh, people from Iraq, Iraqi people. Um, and the, the Korean people, I've heard from them a little, I haven't talked to them, but I've seen them talking in threads. Apparently, every British person in the show has terrible accents, and they sound like they come from Hackney or something like that. Um, the Korean show, like, apparently Jin's Korean is terrible, but it's okay because we love him, so it, it's all right. Um, and Australian, I don't know, the, the, from, from what I've gleaned, Claire, the, you know, the lady who played Claire is great, but everybody else is American. They're not actually Australian. They're just putting on an accent. Same thing for a lot of the Brits. I think it's just Americans with British accents. Um, and then what for Iraqi, <laughs> like a bunch of people said that Saeed's uh, Arabic is terrible. And that makes sense, you know, but... I also hear that some people are like the, the way that he dressed, you know, like the wife beaters, the curly hair, whatever. Some people thought that it uh, was pretty much on point, so mixed reviews there. And then um, lastly, I, I would love to hear something from the Nigerian perspective because of Mr. Echo. Like, I don't think I've run across anything. Me personally, from an American perspective, I think it's so spot on. Um, Michael and Walt, like... Just the like yelling black dad, like Walt, Walt, just always walking around, Walt, you know, just <laughs> spot on. Um, Shannon and her brother Boone, like I think that they are overly exaggerated, but for the most part, like yeah. And Rose and Bernard, I feel like I feel like me and my husband are like Rose and Bernard uh, 1.0 or whatever. We're like them 30 years ago, but um. No, I know couples like that. I feel like the American um, stereotype was okay, but of course that's because it's an American show. But beyond that, the intentions were good. You know, in some of these threads that we talk about, loss could not have been made today. Well, it just, maybe it could be made, but it would be something different. You know, like it was so sweet in sort of the time period that it was because we weren't as 
overanalyzing and overthinking race and being politically correct, I would say. And so you get wonderful creativity like this because, you know, you get to explore. You get to explore. And I just feel like there's a level of truth through the multiculturalism, even if the stereotypes are exaggerated. The overarching sort of lesson and moral behind it is more important, we would say, or is it achieves more than the little tiny eras and, and stereotypes and bits that, that, that went wrong, I would say. And Lock and Jack, I talked about them. I love their dynamic. Um, Kate and Jack and Sawyer. <laughs> Kate and Jack and Sawyer, though. You have to, like, make sure you put them together because Kate... Um, I love Kate. I loved her from the beginning. I think towards the end of the series, like her character, they they had gotten a little fatigued with her. But in the beginning, um, just the way that she is so she 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 is like girl power. I feel like she is like early two thousands girl power before we even like got to sort of where we are today. Um, and she had a torrid past, but you saw that things weren't so cut and dry. And she and Jack represent how opposites attract. Like, I've talked in other videos about my husband being introverted and analytical and shy um, and a little bit more conservative on certain things. And me, I'm, like, outspoken and um, oh God, I'm trying to speak in French. Exigent. What is the word for exigent? Outgoing. <laughs> I'm extroverted that's better extroverted and um yeah like opposites attract it's a thing and <clears throat> you, you you would think that Kate would end up with Sawyer because you have two country bumpkins <laughs> you have two country bumpkins and you would think the country bumpkins would lump together but it just doesn't work like that like it, it's very hilarious to see Kate couple up with Jack and Sawyer couple up with um Juliet because honestly that's how it is in real life sometimes it's just like that show Roseanne you know like Roseanne wrote those characters based off of her own children and you know the daughter who was the goody two-shoes ended up with the sensitive guy and the daughter who was the rebel ended up with the rebel guy. But in her show, she inversed it. She wrote it the opposite because she always thought that's how it should have been. I don't know. I'm not saying that Roseanne Barr is the best parent or whatever too. <laughs> so don't take that on. But I do know that those relationships exist from being in one. Opposites attract and um, sometimes they are the person who forces you to be your best self. And... Kate and Sawyer weren't going to help each other be each other's best selves. Uh, Jack and Juliet, I won't even comment on that. Rose and Bernard. So I already talked about Rose and Bernard. They're like 1.0, me and my husband. They're hilarious. Bernard is a uh, just typical example of a guy who just, just yap, 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 and on think they know everything and Rose is the sweet flower who's just like shut, shut up <laughs> you know it's just like I love their dynamic um but at the same time Bernard is a support and the backbone for Rose in a way you know like that scene where he's like we'll never leave you know that right there sums up their love completely in totality um Sun and Jen Sun and Jen are the best romantic couple from the show, period. Like, there is no disputing it. The Korean storyline is like, it's everything. It's everything. Um, I think that Koreans, at least in the U.S., they probably felt like it was a little bit fantasized, overly fantasized, and they probably felt that in times it was a little bit... Um, you know, they probably felt like they were looking at an American show that had a little scratch on the surface of their culture, but like, oh, okay, we appreciate the effort, you know? <laughs> That's how I feel about it. I don't know. Then you have Saeed and Shannon! <laughs> Shannon! Saeed and Shannon and Nadia. Now, um, this triangle, <laughs> there's this one writer who's like, um... 
she she like took each character and basically described them and summed them up in one you know one line or whatever and um shannon was just shannon it was like spelled phonetically shannon because you know he's like yelling her name half of the show was shit and she's like falling down in the woods and stuff and you know that compared to nadia who we see nadia as someone who he tortured he literally tortured when he was in the iraqi army and they fall in love because they are actually childhood friends and stuff nadia is a woman who is you can tell she's not she and Shannon are very different types of women. You, women, you can tell that Nadia is very uh, sound and resolved in her faith, in her beliefs, <clears throat> in her morals. You know, the fact that she let Saeed um, torture her because she's, 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 she's not going to resist. She, she's a proponent of love and peace. And um, I feel like that whole triangle, there's a reason it was written that way. And life is like that sometimes. If you look at people who have been have had previous marriages and they go on to marry like the 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 pinnacle like the total just example of who it is you think they're supposed to be with it, you know I feel like that's kind of how it was with Nadia like when he comes back to Nadia after getting back from the island anyway I'll have to make a whole video about that. This won't be the last video, so we'll explore deeper. So I'll just kind of keep punching through. Michael and Walt. <laughs> Michael and Walt. <laughs> Michael, my boy, Walt. <laughs> Walt! Walt! My boy! My boy! That's all I have to say about that. Um, anyway, I love the dynamic between Michael and Walt. I feel like there's some really deep lessons in that, especially since Michael ends being one of the, the freighters, one of the trapped souls on the island who can't escape. Oh, by the way, I hope you guys like my makeup today. Like, um, I kind of screwed up a little bit on my eyes, and I have this little trick. My friend in high school, a long time ago, told me, oh, just use vanilla lotion. Um, which I don't know if vanilla is the thing, but I, I, I don't necessarily use vanilla lotion. I just use lotion I put a little bit on the tissue and then it just, it really does like it's, but yeah, it's a great trick if you mess up on your makeup sometimes. But, um, <clears throat> I, I just think that there were so many important lessons in, in Walt and Michael's dynamic, you know, it, it basically brought up this, this idea of the black, angry black man stereotypes. It brought in the stereotypes of how absent fathers exist within the black community. It brought in the stereotypes of, uh, you know, black men being associated with crime and things like that. And we know that Michael did something wrong, but it was to get his child back, you know, and we understand why he did it. And he understands that he has to live with the consequences of that for forever. Um, I also loved the parallel between a black American man and a, a, a black African man, you know, seeing the differences between Michael and Mr. Echo. I, I, I'm going to do, like I said, some of these, I'm going to have to do whole videos on them because I could talk forever. I love it. But you can just see the difference in Michael and Mr. Echo. Just, I, I don't want to say that Michael is like spineless in front of Mr. Echo, but he's kind of spineless, you know, whereas Mr. Echo he comes from a background of crime, he comes from a background of uh, wrongdoing, but he has turned his life around, he's turned his life over to God, and um, I'm not going to say either is right or wrong, you know, that's, that's the thing about loss, is everybody, uh, you can't say that they're right or wrong, it's just like us as human beings, you know, it's like, sometimes humans do things that are wrong, sometimes they do things that are right, but the, the most important thing is that you're repentant and you try and turn your life around. And that was the goal of the island, you know. That's like why in the end they're in the church. It's like they're coming together like, are you ready? Are you ready? It's what, what we do here, you know, is going to be judged in my belief, in my opinion, through my faith. I think that what we do here will be judged at some point by an ultimate power. And um even if you don't believe that, even if you're atheist, like my husband is atheist and we still get to the same conclusion. It's just I get there through God and faith and he just gets there through secular. He just gets there through a secular route. 
and that's okay. Like, um, the last thing I want to talk about is Jacob and the Man in Black. So, I'm not going to go too much into this, but you can clearly see that Jacob and the Man in Black is talking about this, this um, dynamic between good and evil, um, the devil and the Lord. Um, and you can see that Jacob's whole thing, his whole point of existence is protecting the island. And so I feel like that right there is a direct um, symbolism of Christ, you know, because Christ, it's just like a, what I read from you uh, from Romans in the beginning, Christ protected the Jews and the Greeks, you know, he's here for all men, you know, and the man in black just cares about destruction. And that's, 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 um, yeah, I love Lost. I love it. I, I watch it at least, I would say, not the whole thing. Sometimes it's just one or two episodes and then I move on back to whatever else I was watching, like the new stuff I was watching or some other throwback shows. Or I go through the whole thing, like I binge watch the whole six seasons. And I do that probably every once a year or two years or something, just... Whenever I feel like um, I'm in the mood, when I want to have a good laugh, when I want to have a good cry, um, when I want to think about the beauty in life, you know, there's so many life lessons and loss. And all of us lost kids, that's, that's always what we're just ranting on about. You know, I have yet to see a show that has competed with it at all. You know, I, I looked at J.J. Ab Abrams' Fringe, good, but it's not lost. The 100, you know, like, The 100 is a show that if you really, really love Lost and you kind of need something to, like, transition off of it with, The 100 is good, but um, even The 100, I feel like it just doesn't get there. You know, when I, when I end with it, I don't have the same sense of resolve and comfort and humanity that I have with loss because you know loss ends on a very positive note whereas I feel like the 100 ends with everybody being like light dead light things you know and <clears throat> Clark and, and her peeps just you know whatever so 100 no um what other shows do people say um there is the Ricky Ger uh Ricky Gervais is it Ricky Gervais um Afterlife. Afterlife is depressing as heck. Really beautiful show. Like, but um, what's so great about Lost is that there's joy and sadness in the show. What other shows could I think of that have um, popped up over the years where they say it's, you know, kind of dips into that territory? There's no Lost. They aren't Lost. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I will be back to you to you with another video soon. Um, the next video uh, I want to bring you guys, uh, we're going to talk about the difference, how Disney Channel was different for millennials, different than it was for Gen Z. So let's analyze our Jet Jacksons, our Hannah Montanas, our Selena Gomez characters, Wizards of Waverly Place and High School Musical, and let's just see how it was different for the two generations. Um, that's going to be broken up into two parts. So the first part will just be about millennials. The second part uh, will focus more on Gen Z. I'm going to be doing more content like that. Um, I want to start up a series about what life was like in, you know, the years, you know, what life was like in 2001, what life was like in 2007, in 2015, you know, what was going on. Because um, I love that kind of pop culture nostalgia stuff. If you guys like it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe as always. And I will see you in the next video. Remember, someone out there loves you. And you are important. No matter who you are, where you are, you are important. And don't ever, ever let anyone take your smile away. Okay? Love you guys. See you next time. Bye.